Hello, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. Last week I had a look at the most popular garage band for Mac tips from my Quick Tip series. This time around, it's all about iOS and the most popular bite-sized techniques for GarageBand on iPad and iPhone. In GarageBand for iOS's Marvelous Merging, I show how you can bypass GarageBand's 32 track limit using the Merge function. Here is a project on my iPhone that has reached the maximum number of tracks. You can see that I'm unable to add any more tracks to it. If I tap twice on the track header of this track, I can select Merge from the menu that pops up. In the track header area, I can then tap on these circles to add the tracks that I would like to merge together. I can then tap merge to start the process off. A new copy of the project has been created with the tracks I've chosen to merge replaced by a single audio recorder track. The original pre-merged version of my project is also still available in the My Songs browser in case I want to go back to it. So what's actually happening here is that GarageBand is allowing you to export or bounce a selection of tracks in place, essentially consolidating multiple tracks into one real audio track. Now that's great, but you need to bear in mind that this means you will no longer be able to edit things like effects, volume or quantization in the individual tracks that you are merging together. So it's best to finalize any mixing or editing in the tracks that you plan to merge. You can use merging not just to add extra tracks to a maxed out project. If you're producing a particularly effects heavy project on an older iDevice, there's a good chance you'll run into the dreaded optimizing performance message, where GarageBand will lock up, go through the optimizing process, and allow you to carry on for about two minutes until it needs to optimize again. It's infuriating. You can take some of the strain off of your device's processor by merging some of your effects heavy tracks together. Again, remember that you won't be able to edit these tracks or the effects you have applied to them after merging. So make sure that you are 100% happy with them beforehand. In GarageBand's sneaky sections, I demonstrate how you can extend the length of your projects almost indefinitely and how to organize them into neat wee sections. Okay, first off, tap the song section button. It's this wee plus icon in the top corner. To have your project match the length of your recordings, simply tap section A and then tap the automatic toggle switch here. Your project will be one big section that will last as long as you choose to record into it. To add separate sections to use as intros, verses, choruses, etc., open the song sections controls and tap add. The new empty section is added after the last section. Tap anywhere in tracks view to close the song section controls or you can keep adding new sections as you wish. To change the length of a section, open the song section controls again and then tap the inspector button next to the section name you want to make longer. Tap the up or down arrow next to manual to lengthen or shorten the section incrementally by bars. You can swipe vertically to change it in larger increments if you wish. You can play different sections by swiping left or right in the tracks view until you get to your desired section or you can open the song section controls, then choose the section you want to play. 
to play all the sections in the song Choose All Sections. Finally, if you want to change the order of your sections, open the song section controls again and then tap edit. Drag a section up or down in the list by the handle on its right edge. It's those three horizontal lines there. And when you're finished, tap done. In GarageBand's superb screen record solution, I share how to master iOS's screen recording function so you can share your project in video format. iOS has a built-in screen recorder that's pretty straightforward to use. As of iOS 13 slash iPadOS, this screen recorder records and outputs audio in stereo. If you're running an older version of iOS, you can still follow along with the instructions in this video, but the audio of your captured video will be in mono, not stereo. So bear that in mind. What we're going to do here is add the screen recording function to your iDevices control center. Control center is the settings and controls that appear when you swipe down from the top right corner of your screen in iOS. Okay, first thing to do is head to your iDevices settings menu. Then tap on control center and tap again on customize controls. The list at the top here are the controls that currently appear in your control center. The list below that is the list of controls that can be added to control center. You'll see screen recording here. Tap the green plus icon next to it and it will be added to the list at the top. Now, when you're ready to record your GarageBand project video, just swipe down from the top right of your screen to access control center, tap the screen record icon, wait for the countdown and then your screen will be recorded. When you're done, reopen Control Center and tap again on the screen recorder icon. Your captured video will save to your Photos app. You can now share it as you wish. I show how you can play GarageBand's touch instruments in an unconventional way in GarageBand's interesting instrument inputs. Okay, this one is really simple. In GarageBand for iOS's sound browser, you'll want to completely ignore the touch instrument whose sound you want to recreate. Instead, navigate to the keyboard touch instrument. Tap on the more icon in the bottom right of the keyboard icon to open this menu. From here, scroll down to other. In this menu, you'll find all of GarageBand for iOS's available touch instruments. Only when you select one, it will open in keyboard format instead of that particular instrument's usual interface. This allows you to do some things that you aren't able to do in these instruments' normal interface layouts, like add an arpeggiator, for example. And the most popular GarageBand for iOS quick tip by a country mile is GarageBand's Autoplay Anomaly, where I reveal a little known secret that makes GarageBand's Autoplay feature a lot more appealing and usable. So in this particular touch instrument, I'm in chords mode and I have selected from one of the four available Autoplay sequences. If I tap the C chord strip here with my finger, you'll hear the sequence play back. So far, so what, right? Well, if I then tap on the same chord strip with two fingers at the same time, you'll hear that the autoplay pattern changes a little. What's more, if I then tap on the same chord strip with three fingers at the same time, the autoplay pattern changes again.
What this means is that there are three variations available in each of an instrument's four autoplay patterns, depending on whether you activate a chord strip with one, two, or three fingers. And this is true for every single touch instrument and touch instrument type available in GarageBand for iOS. There you have it. Those are the top five most popular GarageBand for iOS quick tips. If you want to dive into the full quick tip playlist, you'll find a link to that down in the description. Should I bring this series back? And if so, what kind of sneaky bee tricks would you like to see? Make sure and leave a comment below to let me know. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.